Jesus being alive is a, it's a big deal. It's a big deal, right? And as Christians, sometimes we lose sight of that, that uh, we are allowed to walk through life walking alongside the, uh, the risen Savior. A couple of things just before we get started. First, um, Tim announced last week or that we we're starting a new um, email for folks who need prayer. And a uh, few have started to trickle in. And so if, if you have a prayer request, you know, and you just think, oh man, I, I, I just need to know that somebody, somebody is on this with me. Uh, you can send an email to studentprayer at gordon.edu and you will be prayed for and prayed over. All right, so um, studentprayer at gordon.edu. Um, also, after each uh, chapel service on Mondays and Wednesdays, we realize that sometimes folks just come in here, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on in all of our lives, right? And you think, shoot, I, I wish... Now, I don't want to carry this burden out of here by myself. And uh, so if, after each service, um, Tim and Corey, myself, I mean, we'll, we'll be down here. And if you want to come down and just sort of grab us, uh, we'd be glad to, uh, to pray with you before you leave. All right, so um, we're going to be doing that. One last thing, swim team. How many people from the swim team are here? There they are. Hey, will you guys stand up for a minute? They're like, I didn't know you were gonna make me do this. Hey, the, I had them stand up because the swim team is on its way. They are on their way to the championships this weekend. So may you swim like fish. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, um, you know what, I'm going to ask as we uh, get ready to start here and read scripture, uh, if you're able, if you would please stand for the reading of God's word. Reading this morning is found in John chapter 13, uh, the first 17 verses. It was just before Passover, the Passover festival, and Jesus knew the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. And having loved his own who were um, in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, son of, Judas of Simon Iscariot, to portray Jesus. And Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, wrapped a towel around his waist, and after that, he poured water in a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, do not, uh, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew he was going to be, who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and, I rightly, and uh, rightly so, for it is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. And very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. 
May God bless this reading of his word this morning. You may be seated. I've got to come down for my bag of tricks, which I left over here. There we go. Carefully packed in an elegant, elegant uh, market basket bag. You know, the, the passage that we just read, um, Jesus knew his life was ending soon. He knew it. He, he only had a few more slim pieces of time to get the final lessons across, like prep for finals. I, got, I just got a couple of minutes for a review. All right, let me tell you what's important. And with all of what was going to happen on Calvary on his plate, knowing that somebody in the room was going to openly betray him, Jesus chose to serve. He chose to serve. You know, on Monday, Kika was really, wasn't Kika good? He did a great job on Monday. Great job on Monday. You know, he was really kind when he said I was, I was 25 years old. I got to tell you, he, the man lied. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm not 25. And uh, I've seen life. I've seen a lot of life. And as I've seen more life, you know what seeing life does? It teaches you what's important. When the look in the rearview mirror is maybe longer than the look out the windshield, you really start to think of what's important. You know, I've been married to my wonderful wife, Jean, for 41 years. 41. So again, either Kika was mistaken or we were married in vitro. Um, we have four grown children who have all are married with families of their own. We've been blessed with seven grandchildren. And I am blessed to have the title grandpa. I'm a sentimentalist. Doesn't take much to get me choked up. I, I could go there in just a minute. Um, you know, I, I'm a sentimentalist because I look back at life and, and, and I realize what's important. And God has given me the privilege of along the way some of the, the mile markers of life to see like what's important here. Like notice, this is not an unimportant moment. Treasure it. Treasure it. So I, I just have like this drawer in my dresser, like in one corner where I cram stuff. This is like my life important cramming section of my drawer. So I, I brought a few things with me today. We'll set these aside to, uh, to share with you. All right. First, um, from when one of my kids was born. Don't get me going. <laughs> my mom grew up in an incredibly poor family. Ten people in a two-bedroom house. And when I was born, I was the first grandson. So my grandfather went out and bought a grandson a truck. I'm sure it was the least expensive truck at the store but it came with all the heart in the world. You know, big lesson in life. Stuff is stuff. And what's important. All right, let's see what else I got here. I got some baseballs. Uh, it's a baseball. My son Aaron hit a home run. Cardinals won 5-1 to one over the Bears on, on June 14, 2000. Little League home run. First Little League home run. It's a baseball my grandfather gave me uh, that was play, used in a game in 1924. Hit this with a bat now, it'd probably explode. 
And there's lots of other sundry things in here. Let's see what I got. Now. Um, here you go. Bill will know this one. Right? This was the, uh, when I was a student, it's a big deal when you first get to vote in an election. And the very first election I could vote in was when Jimmy Carter was running. Right? So I got a pin from that and other stuff. You know, it's, people look at it and just say it's knickknacks, and they are. They are, except for the people who are behind them. All right? I saved a special one in here. This, this is serious artifact stuff in here. First, I don't know why I saved this one. I could probably throw it away. But it is a, um, it's a, uh, the airline ticket on Piedmont Airlines, that tells you something, right? Piedmont Airlines to go to my first meeting as an ordained pastor. This is the treasure. If th this could get me, I'm just telling you. But you'll love it. I found this one. Dear Tooth Fairy, dated 12-17-1990. Dear Tooth Fairy, I lost a tooth at school today at music. This is my first lost tooth. Please give me two dollars. <laughs> because my brother told me that kids brag about it. <laughs> From Justin. Please give my tooth back. Justin is 37 years old, lives in California, has a, a little girl who soon will be, is of the age that pretty soon she'll be leaving notes under her pillow. You know, it's important in life. It's important in life. Jesus decided the lesson he wanted to teach in this passage was about washing feet. We don't wash feet. Right? Uh, it's not something that we do, but I think the, the broader picture is Jesus said, serve each other. And let me show you what it means. And when his service started at the sort of the rank end of the body, he said, let me show you what service looks like. Service looks like finding people or work, working with people wherever they are. Maybe meeting their biggest needs and not just the shallow ones that ripple, ripple across the top. You see, the reality is we, we, all, we all need to be clean. Next, Thursday, or next Wednesday is the first day of Lent. It's also the day that cars will be flying out of here. Right? Most, for, most folks, spring break starts next week. Um, but it's the first day of Lent, which is sort of watching Jesus' journey to the cross. Right. We're going to take that journey together uh, next Wednesday in chapel if you're here, and I, and I hope you will be, because um, that journey is important. For those of you who come from traditions where you receive ashes on Ash Wednesday, which is what next week is, we're making arrangements uh, for that to be available to you and we'll communicate that uh, via an email as to where and when. All right. Jesus, when he was there, in verse three it says, all power was his. He could have done anything. All power was his. And what did he do? He got up, and he wrapped a towel around his waist and he got to work. The work of, of caring, sharing, but more importantly, serving. More importantly, serving. You see, what he did was he, he, he illustrated what it means to, to serve selflessly. Right, to get down and wash somebody's feet is selfless. And that is so counterculture. Our culture screams what? Selfish people win. 
That is what our culture shouts. Selfish people win, or at least the perception is there. Get yours while you can get it. Because someday it may not be your turn. Right? When, when your turn comes around, do not waste it and do not swing and miss. Grab it. Grab it. And yet Jesus says to serve selflessly. Jesus also looked at the situation and the need in the group. He saw a bunch of nasty feet and he served proactively. He decided that he was going to serve and none of the disciples said, oh, excuse me, my feet are a mess. Is there anyone here to take care of this? He saw a need and he got up and he did something about it. He did something about it. And he taught us to serve sacrificially. To not see ourselves as above anybody else. But to humble ourselves. Humility is hard. You know why humility is hard? Because humility is vulnerable. It's a vulnerable move to claim that I got needs. I got needs. Again, when the culture is saying, have everything, have everything, have everything. What do you want? What do you need? What do you need? Buy it. Get it. If you have a, if you have a real need, odds are there's something you can purchase that will solve that. And now in our culture, I mean Amazon. I, mean, I order on Amazon all the time. You know what Amazon has done? It has taught us instant gratification. You think you need it, it'll be here tomorrow. And if, you, if, if there's a problem, it'll be here the next day. Right? And so we have accumulated more stuff. I, I heard a commentator talking about the, um, one of the ramifications of the pandemic is everybody ordering stuff. They said, our culture, we got more stuff now than we've ever had. And they said, you know, inflation, that's so high. One of the things that's going to bring inflation down is we're running out of stuff we need. Right? I mean, you drive around and there are, there are buildings with garages or storage units. Why? Because our, we got so much stuff it doesn't fit in our houses. We got to stash it somewhere. But stuff is of this world. And you know where everything that you can buy ultimately goes? Everything you buy. Everything made by man, its ultimate destination at some point is a dumpster. Is a dumpster. And Jesus is saying, invest in people. Right? This is the group of men that he had spent three years with, and he's still not done with the investment. In fact, he's looking and saying, time is short, and I got to do something about this. I got to get on it. Right? When you come to college, you get here, and there's a cl certain clock that's ticking. Right? Four years, maybe five, maybe three, maybe three and a half, but the clock is ticking. It's really easy when you can see the runway at the end to just look at it and say, all right, we'll be on the ground shortly, like an airplane. No need to worry. But, you know what? Squeeze the juice out of the moment. Invest in people. Do not give up on that moment. See, God calls for us to service and serve one another, to care for each other in the name of Jesus. Now, Jesus wrapped a towel around him. I went into some of our active, we have like a bunch of different things at our house. We have like the active towels. We have the towels that are active and live in my wife and I bathroom because we don't think, we don't think the guests are quite, the, the guests we need to have more worthy towels. Right? And the guest bathroom is where you get the nice towels that are sort of plush. Right? In my bathroom, you get the ones that are nicely worn, right? And soft, right? Worn and, warm and soft, nice, right? And so you get those. Um, we've been married 41 years. I think we got this one, this set as a wedding gift. Um, and what happens when you've been married 41 years, all of those showers that you got, like wedding showers, wedding gifts, bridal showers, <laughs> nobody throws a 40th 
anniversary shower. So, so we got more towels that don't match. Why? Because their partners have given it up for some cause along the way. The, um, this towel, I have seven of these towels. Remember last year, uh, anybody who's not a freshman, last year when we were outside for chapel, right, 900 chairs whew, lined up. When we first did that, I thought, oh, man, this is going to be great. It's going to be great. I, I did like it out there. But then the very first outdoor chapel, I park my car, I walk over there, make sure everything's all set, and I look down on one of the chairs, and there was a puddle of dew. We would have had 900 wet butts if we, didn't, if we weren't proactive. So I was like, shoot. I went in my car, found a rag, and I'm standing out there starting to dry 900 chairs. And I'm trying to figure out my pace, how many chairs per minute times 900, and I'm thinking, oh, I'm not going to do this. And uh, some of you remember Sean Collins. He used to always sit like right over there. Sean saw me out there, and he said, like, Bob, what are you doing? I'm like, Sean, man, we got a problem. We, we, we got do. We never thought about do. We, so, we had our eye on COVID, but we didn't think about do, right? And so he, he finds somebody who's going into Drew and says, hey, uh, brother, you have a towel. And Sean comes out, and he starts giant ch chairs with me. Two days later in the chapel office, we got a box. And the box was from Amazon, and it was a box of white towels. They were from Sean. He says, I, I, I want to bless you with towels. And I also want to bless you that you don't have to be the one who uses them. We got this. We got this. So I mean, every, every time I pick up this towel, I, I think of a student who was living out selflessness. Saw a need and said, hey, let me do something there. And I, I think that's the call, you know, that is ours along the way. You know, we all, we all love to be served. When you go in a restaurant, right, it's sort of nice to be served. Remember, you go to a gas station, right? If you live in New Jersey, how many of you are from Jersey? New Jersey, where it's illegal to touch the gas pump. You just pull and say, fill regular, please, and somebody does it. And you think, thank you for being. It's illegal to have self-serve in New Jersey. So if you want to know what that's like, you can fill up your gas tank and drive to Jersey. Fill it up. Come on back. But I, when we go to a restaurant, what do we do? We, ju we judge the service. We judge the service. How do we judge it? Tip time. How loved did I feel? How quickly did you respond to my needs? What's that look like? Eh, I think that was a, eh, I'm going to give you a 15 percenter on this one. I'm going to give you a 20. That was really good. I'm going to punish you because I had to wait for my bread and butter. I'll teach you. Here's 5 percent. See what that looks like for you. Right? I mean, it, 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 it sort of talks about our nature. It talks about our nature. See, when it comes to service, Jesus calls us to do that. Jesus calls us to leave people's lives better than when you arrived. That's a challenge. And folks, we, we need to be about that. The decision to, um, to serve leads people there, right? And, and Christian service builds character. And it, it's, counter, it, it's contrary to, uh, to, the, to sin. That's, how, that's why it's so hard. Our sinful nature wants to be selfish. And our Christian nature needs to say, like, no, I'm going over here. I'm, I'm setting that aside. It's not about me. I'm going to make this about somebody else. You know what? When you start doing that, and there are lots of servants here. A lot of you are great servants. But, you know, when you do that, do you not find that service begets service? You start to realize what it means to make a difference in somebody's life as opposed to to be an acquaintance in somebody's life, right? Difference makers. Jesus wrapped the towel around himself and made himself a servant. You know, we, we've been called to care. We've been called to care. We need to be a folks as we come into Lent and, and the celebration of Easter and the reminder of the fact that we are all sinners and God looked at you and looked at me and said, you are worth it. You are worth it. 
I'm going to the cross for you, and I am going to rise from the dead and be risen so that we might live forever with one another. You see, Christian service builds people. Who are you building? You know what's the opposite of that? Gossip. Gossip. I mean, what does gossip do? Right. The definition of gossip is that when I get done talking about somebody with somebody else, if that person thinks less of that person, then before I got there, I have gossiped. And it doesn't matter if it's verbal, if it's on a tweet, if it's on a post. It's sin and it's contrary to what God wants of us. He wants us to care, to love, to share with one another. We live in a world that desperately needs to see examples of love. You know, among us, there are hurting people in this room. Among us, there are lonely people in this room. You can be at a place with 1,400 other people and still feel lonely. Right? Look around. Serve one another. Let's care better for one another. Let's put a towel around our waists and go to work. Now, it would be really interesting to me. This, this is one of the smooth comfies. It's one of my favorites. All right? It's, it's got some, some wear on it. But you know why it's, it's smooth and comfortable? It's because it's given up part of itself along the way to do its job. It's lost some of its nap because it's faithfully done its job and that is to dry whatever it is that it needs to dry. If our lives were represented by a towel, how worn is yours? How worn is yours? Why? Because it's been doing its job. I, I, I thought... What if when you were born, God gave us a towel, a face cloth, and said, here, turn this in when you're done. And I mean done. Before we got to heaven, God says, hey, can I see your towel? How well did you serve? We don't have towels. But we still, as Christians, all to serve. Service is an act of worship. It is an act of worship that is often done in the quiet and by yourself. But it's also an act that brings joy to the heart of our Savior. So may we be the church. May we be the body of Christ here. May we look around and care well for one another. And uh, may God's light shine brighter as a result of that. So, serve on. Serve on. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for uh, your word that challenges us to take a towel and wrap it around ourselves and go make a difference. Lord, in the busyness of life, we so often lose sight of that. Lord, may we, may we see others, all those around us, as valuable in your eyes. And may we, Lord, find ways to better serve one another. Lord, may we become really good at selflessness. And as a result, let our light shine bright for your kingdom. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.